then we'll uh, move to the next part, um, which is uh, just a couple of slides um, introducing why financial markets are important. Why should we care uh, at all about financial markets? Why should we take a course like this then? Right. Um, so in, in financial markets, um, normally the, the, the role that financial markets play is that to make sure that there is a flow from the place where there is a, there's a surplus of money to the place where there is a shortage of money. Right? You see, so what, what, what normally happens in, 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 in society is that when you, are, when you are young and you haven't started maybe uh, even working, you don't, have, uh, you don't have much money naturally. But as you, as you grow older, you, 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 you work, you save some money, you have, you have a lot of savings, right? So there is this kind of a, 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 a balance uh, problem, right? You, you are young, you need actually a lot of money, but you don't have any. You might have many ideas to start a company, you, you need to buy a house, you need to maybe borrow money to, to get it started with, uh, um, with, with, uh, with buying furniture to your house or, or whatever else uh, your needs might be that you can pay later. So, so there is, there, uh, if, if, if we assume a society where we can find a way to get money from, from those who have the money and give it to those who don't have, then it has some, some apparent advantages. And if you think about it, um, the, the societies normally do that in a number of ways. So one way is, and anybody can come up with one, one way that uh, we do this kind of distribution of wealth from, from, the, from the, the rich to the, to the poor, so to say, or from those with more money to those who don't have, which has got nothing to do with financial markets. Sorry? Donations. Well, donations can be one, one way. Social security, yeah, that would be uh, via taxation, right? So, so taxation is one way, right? So, so we, we all those who, I mean, the more you earn, the more you're taxed. So that's one way of, of, of sending the money. Uh, you could say, well, by, by force, then you have, of course, donation, which is not by force, that's voluntary. But um, financial markets essentially kind of offer a third option. It's also voluntary. Uh, and it's, it's, it's again, but at the end of the day, financial systems are about redistribution of wealth from those who have money to those who don't have. But in this case, those who have money, they will invest their money into those projects that they believe in or they into your essentially future, um, in, future income uh, potential. If, you know, once you get a loan to buy a house, then the, the, the major job of the bank is to find out whether you are credit worthy, meaning that they believe that within the next 20 or 30 years, you're going to earn enough money to pay the loan back, right? So, so this is the purpose of financial markets that in a voluntary way, make sure that the money goes from where there's a surplus of money to where there's a shortage of money. Um, and obviously, if, if, if you get a financial market which is well-functioning, then uh, that, that, would be, that, that would mean that you will have more uh, economic activity in, in that society. If, if people can, can have, a, have a house to live in, even though they have, don't have the money yet, and if they can get uh, funding to, to start their, their projects, then you will have much more economic activity than you otherwise would have, would have had. So that, that's kind of one main purpose of financial markets um, that, um, as, as, we, as we know them today. Um, and then the, there's a if you want to get into details, then, then they do that by providing products and services uh, such as payment transactions, loans, investment products, and insurance products, right? So, so you have, um, if you think of, well, investment products, that could be possibility of investing on, on stocks or could be, uh, or, or, you know, in, in, in um, some, some indices, uh, mutual funds. So these are financial products which essentially allow you to invest into other people's ideas, right? Projects. Uh, could be done directly, uh, could also be done indirectly via, via banks, right? Um, so it's that, that's the one, or, or it could be in the fixed income markets, in the, into bonds, which would then go to, to fund some loans. So that's, so, so, so you have financial products in the one hand, um, but they are built essentially to serve this purpose of transition of money from, from those who, who have a surplus to those who have a shortage. And the process of doing that uh, so there is uh, something called risk, which the, the financial markets also have to take care of. Because think of it if, let's say, if uh, I wanted to go and, you know, ask uh, 
my parents or you know some some other old people uh, with a lot of money uh, that better you know I can I can take some of their uh, their money to buy a house you know so so that, that they might uh, they might not quite uh, trust whether I would uh, give the money back you know something might happen to me as an individual and you know that 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 that's definitely a risk that they have to take into consideration but if I go to a bank. Uh, for one thing, um, you know, they have better means, legal means, to make sure that they can uh, make me pay as far as I'm alive and well and, and, and doing, and, uh, you know, working and having some income, then they have the legal means to, to make me pay back. So, so that's one way for them to reduce the risk. So the investors on the other side, which go to the bank, they have a higher trust that if they give their money to me via the bank, then they, there's a higher chance that they will essentially receive their money back. That essentially means that the, the cost of this lending will go down, right? So that's one, fu one function. By reducing risk, that will essentially reduce also the cost of lending money or the cost of uh, uh, investing, All right? Um, so that, that's, that's one way of doing that. The other and obvious one is uh, that by, by pooling a group uh, of people together, investors in the one side, and then the let's say the loan takers or the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the companies on the other side who want to, to receive this, this money, putting them in, in, into a pool, they make sure that if the individual persons or companies, they default, so that means if they can't pay their loans back or they can't uh, make money on their project, their company goes bankrupt, then still there will be many other companies who hopefully will not go bankrupt. So as a whole, that's, for example, the, f the purpose of investing rather than an individual company, investing on a whole index. So you are investing your money in 4,000 companies in one go rather than investing your money in the individual companies. So even if 10 or 50 or 100 of these 4,000 companies go completely bankrupt or they lose 50% of their value within the first year of your investment, still there will be some other 3,000 companies that hopefully are going to do better. Some of them are going to do great. Some of them are just going to stay put. So in that way, that's one other way, by pooling investors together and also pooling companies and loan takers together, the financial institutions are reducing the risks in the financial markets. So, so the purpose of financial markets is give the money from one side to the other. And the process of doing that, they build the financial products, which kind of make sure that this transaction can be done smoothly. Um, and also, in that process, they make sure that they reduce the risk of uh, doing these transactions. Right? Um, just one, yeah, one final point here would be that um, there, there have been studies done which show that in countries where they have a well-functioning financial market, normally you have, uh, you, you, you can measure that there is a contribution, a positive contribution to economic growth, right? So um, there's, uh, if you see, for example, countries normally in the, in, the, in the Western Europe or North America, these are some countries, and also in, in, in Asia, Southeast Asia, with very well-functioning financial markets, you will see also a higher level of uh, economic activity. So th these, these things are, are correlated uh, together. Then you can also discuss, obviously, the, the opposite, that the, in terms of crisis, um, you, you will see that there is a destruction of wealth, like you see in the, that that's what you're going to study in the different financial crisis that you're going to present, how, how that happened. But also a not well-functioning financial, sec uh, financial sector would, would, would ruin wealth, ruin people. And, you know, that, that those are, of course, that's that kind of the backside. So this, in, in, in theory, that's how the financial markets have to work. In practice, you will see also uh, there, there are negative sides to financial markets that, that uh, I want you to reflect on. Um, we are not going to have so much focus on, um, on, on, uh, uh, on the course as part of the lectures, but that's, that's uh, some, something essentially for you to reflect on and essentially come back with the negative side. So these were kind of, that's how financial markets, have, how, how they have to work. But I want you also to reflect on what are the things which make financial markets to work, to work even better in the future and what are the examples of the times when it just goes wrong. Right, um, and in regards to that, I'm going to recommend uh, to you to uh, uh, two sources, which are quite um, quite interesting to, to look at. The one is a uh, book and uh, also a, a, a video, which is available for uh, for free on YouTube. Uh, the book called "The Ascent of Money: A Financial History of the World." 
And uh, I think if I want to show it here, so it's this, this first one. You see, this is a, this is a four, four hour video. <laughs> so uh, happy watching. Uh, if, if you, uh, so, so it's essentially the whole book. He's, he's not speaking the book. It's actually a very interesting documentary that is um, essentially talking about the topics in the book. Neil Ferguson, who's the, the author of the book, is also the one who's narrating the story. Um, there's also, if you look, look it up on YouTube, there are, there are five, um, you, you can also find it in, in, in five individual uh, uh, segments about 45 minutes, 40, 45 minutes each, each of them corresponding to one of the chapters of, of his book with the, name, with the same name, The Ascent of Money. Um, and these are essentially bringing you back to um, the, uh, the, the history of financial markets. So going back all the way to, to money. So I don't know if you, anybody can say how, how far back do we have history of you know, having, using essentially money as we, we know it, coins. How many, is it in the hundreds of years or is it in thousands of years? Some, some 4,000 years. So, so that's one of the chapters that, 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 that actually starts with, with that. I think the, probably the first coins are found in, you know, back in the days where Iraq was still called Babylon. So, right, so that's, that's one of the places where you have the first, we find the first coins. So we're using essentially money as, as, a, as a means of uh, transaction. Um, and then we have other quite uh, important financial innovations like stocks and bonds. Uh, so he's got a whole chapter on stocks and a whole chapter on, on bonds, but that's from on a historical perspective on, on bonds and, and stocks and, and you know, arguing uh, how they came about. You know, and so, so just, just uh, uh, to, to give you a sense of how old these products are, uh, you know, which, which one is older? Is it bonds or, or stocks? It's bonds. And do you know which, no, which century? The is the it's, it's a way to raise money for waging wars against the other. That's, that's correct. And that's, uh, so, that, so, you've, so you've, you've seen it, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think I introduced it also. You had the, the introductory course. Yeah. Right. So, so um, that's from the, uh, the, the, in, the, in the 1400s. Uh, Italy, uh, we got the bonds and then the stocks we get a couple hundred years later in the Netherlands. The idea of the company, essentially. So stocks and company. Um, the, the, the um, uh, uh, limited liability company comes from, uh, from the Netherlands. And also then you see the rise of Netherlands, such a small country, all of a sudden in the 1600s rise to be uh, the, you know, the, 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 the most uh, significant the superpower of, the, of, of almost a century, uh, of a Navy nation. And, and there's, it, it could be argued that that was due to that, that their race to power was pretty much due to their invention of the idea around company and stock markets. Right? Um, and of course, then they also, they were the ones who got the first crash. You might have heard of the, the tulip crisis. If, if not, you might, uh, you might uh, want to, to actually start to uh, look it up uh, and see what Tulip crisis was all about. Uh, probably that's a bit of a simple crisis to present here, but I mean, anyway, if you have a good take on that, maybe that will go, but that's probably considered to be the first uh, stock market crash uh, as, as, as we know it, the, the, the tulip, tulip bubble and the Tulip crisis. So uh, definitely recommend to, uh, to go through this. Uh, that gives you a broad understanding of financial markets. What's also more interesting in this, that brings you all the way to the financial crisis of 2008 and the reasons why it happened, right? So uh, I remember back in 2008 where I was uh, teaching this, this very course and obviously all the students were very much interested uh, in what was going on, so we were discussing it a lot. But now, 2018, 10 years later, you know, there's probably a, a similar crisis ahead at some point. Uh, uh, sooner or later, the way the, the financial markets are running, we unfortunately we can't avoid it, so it's just a question of time before it hits next time. But um, since these 10 years, I've actually noticed that more students are, are coming in, and probably most of you were still too young in 2008 to, to bother so much about what was going on in the financial markets, right? And anybody who was uh, concerned with financial crisis in 2008? No? Right, but it's, uh, so that, that it's already kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of history for you, right? But it's, uh, it's actually not, it's very kind of recent, 
history. And, and um, even this is not the last financial crisis we had. There, there was also a crisis in 2011. There was another one in 2014. But those were minor ones. So where we have like a general global financial crisis, like the one we had in 2008, that's definitely uh, a topic that you should know uh, everything about. And, and that's, uh, you know, for, for those of you who want to be financial engineers and, you know, having a course like this, then I definitely recommend to, to go through this whole uh, read the book or go through the whole video and, and get an understanding of what caused the financial crisis of 2008. This is, uh, this is a combined crisis. There are many in, in, interesting in, ingredients that go into that crisis. So if, if, if you would be able to even, you know, if there, there are groups who want to talk about the, the financial crisis of 2008, you don't necessarily have to go through all the aspects. You can pick and choose. Maybe there are two groups who want to take that topic and then you can kind of share what areas of the crisis you want to get into, right? So that's like these financial crises for financial engineers are too valuable to waste, right? There is so much knowledge, you know, because you learn a lot from the failures of the, the system you are working with as engineers, right? And if you are financial engineers, we know that there are many examples of failures of the financial system, right? So financial systems as an engineering tool are by no means perfect yet, right? So, so uh, far from. So that's a, that, that also, in a way, makes it more interesting from an engineering point of view. How can you make financial markets more robust? How can you make them better? Right? Uh, so that's one recommendation. The other recommendation that I have for you is uh, the Khan Academy. So the Khan Academy um, is a place where you can um, well, learn about a variety of topics. Among them, you can read about finance. Um, it's called KhanAcademy.org. And if you go down here, you have um, on economics and finance, then you have this topic here, finance and capital markets. This is a, a free site, by the way. Then uh, there are, I think there are some four or 500 videos available, small videos which talk about essentially many of the topics that, um, that you want to know something about. Like if you go to uh, interest and, and debt, then there are videos on you know, interest rate, com compound interest basics, credit card loans, and so on. So here, here you have also the topics. You, if, you, if you don't know about the present value, for example, which was a topic discussed in the first course, and that's something we'll get back to when I talk about bonds uh, and pricing of bonds, you need to, to, to know about present value. And then you, will, then you have some videos here so you can read about time value of money, introduction to present value, present value of two, three, and four. So there are some different, and each of them, they, they have a video of this format where he was just essentially writing on a blackboard and, and uh, on a virtual blackboard and, and talking over that, right? So I'll, I'll be showing every once in a while. Some of them, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll send you links to particular videos. So I don't want you to go and look all the four, 500 videos. You're welcome to do so. I mean, if you're very interested in, in learning from one end to the other, but I will also get back to what are the topics which are more interesting and more related to the topics of this course. Right, any questions on, on financial markets? All right, so that kind of concludes our second part. How many of you already uh, have seen the film? There was one, two, right? So there is a, and also how was you, because you also experience, you have also used the Khan Academy? To, yeah. a, a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do you find it? Was it useful? So, yeah. It's, 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 it's uh, essentially, I think in a course probably like this is even more important for those of you who didn't have the introduction to financial engineering to, to consult the Khan Academy uh, a bit more um, down the road when we, we get into topics like uh, fixed, fixed income, uh, then I might be going a bit faster through, you know, some of the, the basic stuff about like what is a bond in general, what is, yeah, present value, that was one of the topics that I actually showed, um, and uh, how the, uh, you know, what, what, is, what, is the, what is the yield curve, um, interest rates, and so on. So those are the topics that uh, uh, are described uh, very simply and very elegantly by by, by uh, Khan in the, in the Khan Academy. So, so, so you, um, I would definitely recommend you to, to go and have a look on, on those, those topics before the course. 
Right. Um, we'll take the, the last, last topic um, before, uh, before the break, and then we'll, uh, we'll have a break, and then we'll essentially go to, to exercises.